Damon Runyon Theater. Once again, the Damon Runyon Theater brings you another story by the master storyteller, Damon Runyon. And this one, Broadway Complex. And to tell it to you, here is Broadway. Thanks. It is along toward four o'clock one morning, and I am sitting in Mindy's restaurant on Broadway with Ambrose Hammer, the dramatic critic. We are talking of this and that when Ambrose looks toward the door and says as follows. Broadway, who's that guy coming in now? That? Oh, uh, he's a citizen named Cecil Earl. Funny, I've never seen him before. He is what is called the master of ceremonies at the Golden Slipper. Oh. <laughs> Looks like he's sleepwalking. He is a very odd character. What's the matter, Broadway? I do not like this, Ambrose. Cecil is heading for that table at which are sitting... Louis the Lug, Angie the Ox, and Upstate Red. In his right mind, Cecil Earl would walk ten miles to keep away from their shadows. Look, he is reaching inside his coat. For a gun. <laughs> I expect any second to see Cecil Earl do a foldo and join his deceased relatives. Because anybody who reaches inside his coat within eyesight of any one of the three citizens above mentioned can also reach for a lily. He is going to need it. But what happens is something different, and which I will tell you in a minute. Now, back to the Damon Runyon Theater and the famous story, Broadway Complex. Well, what happens is this. Before Cecil Earle is able to reach the table he is heading for, Ambrose Hammer pops out of his chair and collars him. Ambrose brings him to our table. And what goes on is this. Okay, son, sit down, take it easy. You should have let me go. I'd have cooked those babies right here and now. Huh? Cecil, what are you talking about? Who do you think you are? Who are you? Me? Look at me. I... I... <laughs> I know you. Sure you do, Cecil. Ambrose, what is this? I'm not quite sure, Broadway. Cecil. Cecil. Yeah? What were you going to do a minute ago? Do? I cool off those citizens. Why? For muscling in on my territory. Must... Ambrose, this guy is as wobbly as a ten-cent bicycle. He is nobody but Cecil Earl, and he has no territory. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cecil? Uh, Cecil? Huh? Who are you? Me? Why, I'm... He does not know who I'm... he is. Yes, he does. Now look, Cecil. You're Cecil Earl, remember? Earl? Well, who says I'm not? You do. Broadway, do you know where he lives? Sure, over on 49th. Okay, let's get him home. So we take Cecil to his hotel, and on the way over, he gets as straight as I and Ambrose. It seems he gets some sort of funny idea about being somebody else for a while. We tuck him in his bed, and I tell Ambrose all I know about him. Ambrose thinks about it for a minute, and then says... Subconsciously, he wants to be a big shot. He wants to be important, but he's not, is he? Not in the least. Why? Well, every once in a while, like that business in Mindy's before, he takes on a character of his dream world. He becomes, well, a gunman, a killer, a tough mug. All this he dreams? Yes, but he lives his dreams. With a gun? (laughs) Look, here's the gun he had. What? This is nothing but a water pistol. Sure, but to him it was a Roscoe. And he goes to pull it on those citizens? Oh, Ambrose, this can be very dangerous. Only if the others don't know about him. Someday he is going to run into somebody who does not know this is all a dream. So I'll tell you what, Broadway, do him a favor. Me? How? Noise it around about him. Tip off everybody that he's uh, like this. Ah, the poor guy. Just wanted to be somebody and cannot. He'll be all right someday. You mean he will get over wanting to be somebody else? It sometimes happens. How? Oh, if something actually happens to make him feel important, then that inner urge will be satisfied, and he'll be perfectly normal. But what could happen to this Cecil Earl? Who knows? I've seen a lot of things happen to a lot of people. 
it could happen to him. It is not long before everybody knows about Cecil Earl. And a funny thing, even the toughest citizens along the stem play along with him when he gets to dream. Nobody laughs when he is by turns the President of the United States or a big game hunter. Although Mindy resents it a little when Cecil Earl becomes a French chef and takes to criticizing the food. So that is the way things go along for maybe three, four weeks. Then one day I am sitting in Mindy's with Ambrose Hammer and we are joined by Cecil who sits down and speaks. Hello. Hiya, Cecil. Hello, Cecil. Look, I... I've been wanting to talk to you for a long time now. I, I, About what, Cecil? About me. What is the matter? It's just that... Well, I thought maybe I ought to go away. Go away? Why? You know. Anybody say anything to you? Oh, no. no that's just it. Nobody does. Oh, I see. I know I make an idiot of myself when I get one of those... Ah, uh, forget it, Cecil. Sure, forget Ever it. Ever since I was a little kid, I wanted to be somebody. I never was. What am I now? A master of ceremonies in a nightclub. But you're a good one. Maybe, but... Look, Cecil, believe me, when I tell you there are plenty of citizens along this stem who wish they are somebody they are not. Only they do not admit it. You guys as well. Only I... What's the matter? Look, that's Fergus Appleton coming in. There is one guy I wish was somebody else, preferably in the dead past. He's a great actor. You do not like him, Ambrose? I loathe him. In addition to being a bad actor, he smashed in my derby hat the other night. Huh? Why, what has he got against derbies? The fact that I was wearing one and the fact I panned him in his new play, never, never. He's a... Great actor. I if you wish ever it. become him, I wash my hands of you for good. He sees you, Ambrose. Ah, uh, he's going to rub it will, in. Will you introduce me to him? Huh? What for? Sure we will, Cecil. Hello, gentlemen. Mr. Hammer accepted. Just counting me out of your greeting brightens my day, you ham. <laughs> Sour grapes, eh, Hammer? You can never pick a hit, can you? I'll go away. No, I think I'll sit down. Goodbye. So long. Mr. Appleton. Uh, yes? Who are you? Come on, Cecil. I, I want to talk to you. But I'd like to talk to Mr. Appleton. Say, aren't you the chap who... <laughs> oh, of course. I've heard about you. You've been pointed out to me. I have? Cecil, let's get going. Yeah, come on, Cecil. But I want to talk to Mr. Appleton. Certainly. Go away, Mr. Hammer. Napoleon wants to talk to me. Look, Apple Pie, that is no way to talk. One more crack like that and I'll... Uh, Yo, what, Hammer? I'll break your head in. Oh, I don't think so. You're in bed with your paper now for panning. Never, never. Make a pass at me and you'll get the worst publicity anybody ever had. Look, Appleton, let this kid alone. Oh, it's all right, Mr. Hammer. It is not. Maybe you better come with us, Cecil. But I'd like to talk to Mr. Appleton. Oh, it's obvious that Cecil recognizes a kindred spirit. That right, Cecil? I always wanted to be an actor. Okay, okay. What do you say, Broadway? I think I will leave, because suddenly the air in here is very bad. It'll get better when you leave. <laughs> I do not like this Appleton character, and I nose around and find out from others that he is an A number one 200 carat heel. And Cecil is just the kind of a guy Appleton will make a sucker out of, and does. Seems he gets quite a few laughs doing it. Then I get wind of something that seems more than somewhat fishy, and I tell Ambrose about it. He has it no other way but that I go with him to Fergus Appleton's apartment. When we get there, the door is opened by... Mr. Hammer, Broadway... Gee, I'm glad to see you. Come in. Cecil, what are you doing here? Yes, what are you doing here, Cecil? Me? I, I live here now. Mr. Appleton says he'll make a great actor of me. He told you that? Sure. But did you come to see him? That doesn't matter. So you live here now, huh? Mr. Appleton invited me. Why? He, he thinks I've got talent. It's a nice place. This your room, Cecil? Uh-huh. How'd you know? Your, uh, picture in here. Mr. Appleton will be home in a little bit. 
Matinee's almost over. I can hardly wait. Did he know you were coming? I do not think so, Cecil. Say, uh, Cecil, how about a cup of coffee? Can you get one for us? Coffee? Oh, sure. I'll, I'll be back in a few minutes. Just, uh, make yourself at home. Broadway. Come here, will you? What is the idea of you asking for coffee? You know we just had some at Mindy's. Look, when a guy like Fergus Appleton suddenly becomes a big brother, what do you look for? Rats? Exactly. Appleton's never had a thought for anyone but himself. The only thing I can figure is that he regrets making Cecil a laughing stock and wishes to make it up to him. Ah, you believe that? No. Because Fergus does not strike me as the type that ever plays warm for anybody. Unless he wants something. From Cecil? Could be. All of a sudden, we hear that Fergus is treating Cecil like a long-lost relative. Takes him here to live. What are you looking around for? I don't know. Maybe a rat. I smell one. Look, Fergus is due back here soon. What if he catches us here? We're paying a social call, that's all. We're... What is the matter now? Come over here. What is it you find? These books. So? What is so wonderful about finding books? I have a few myself. Yeah. You see what I mean? Who is reading this kind of stuff? This is Cecil's room. The criminal and the criminal mind. Take a look at the next two. Great crimes of history. The art of murder as practiced by seven notorious murderers. Keep going. The perfect crime as a criminological study. Ambrose, I do not like this taste in literature. I'll give you ten to one that Fergus Appleton never read books like these in his life. But what about Cecil? Hmm. Just think about it a second. I do not like to. At first, Appleton uses Cecil as a goat. Then he is very nice to him and gives him this room and these books. Why? That is what I would like to know. What would you like to know? Well, well, Fergus Appleton, of all people to meet in your apartment. What's the idea, Hammer, Broadway? Oh, nothing, nothing. Just dropped in. Not to see me, that's a cinch. Oh, you're so right. Well, guess we'll be going. Just a minute. Sorry, he can't stay, Fergus. You will until I tell you a few things. Like what? Like, don't ever come back here again. It's a pleasure. Come on, Broadway. Oh, hello, Mr. Appleton. Did you let these two in here, Cecil? Huh? Why, sure. Don't do it again. But, they... Cecil, I'm trying to help you. You want me to, don't you? Sure, Mr. Appleton. Sure. Then don't ever let these two in here again, or out you go. Come on, Ambrose. Yeah, so long, Fergus. Goodbye. So long, Cecil. Goodbye, Broadway. Now, what do you know about that? What do I know about what? You know, Broadway, I could swear that Mr. Fergus Appleton looked scared for a minute. Yeah, he does at that. But why should he be scared of us? I don't know. Unless... Unless it's got something to do with those books and Cecil. Yeah. And he does not like us to know about it. Broadway, something tells me we'd better keep a pretty close watch on this setup from now on. Well, this is all very puzzling. I figure Fergus Appleton for a smart cookie. But just how smart he is, I do not find out until later. And I will tell you about it in a minute. And now, back to the Damon Runyon Theater and the famous story, Broadway Complex. <laughs> More than two weeks go by, and Cecil stays Cecil Earl. He no longer becomes anybody else. But he also seems to be getting more and more serious. And once in a while, there is a look on his face we do not like. Then, one day, Ambrose Hammer comes to see him. He seems pretty excited as he says... Broadway, I think I've got something. Is that so? Well, what have you got? You ever hear of Florence Fayette? Fayette, Fayette. Oh, yes, yeah, she is the daughter of Homer Fayette. Uh huh? Who owns the paper I work for. So her father owns the paper you work for. If you will tell me how that ties in with anything, I will buy you a new hat. I'll take a rain check on that, but here's something else. About how long ago do you figure Fergus Appleton started his big brother routine with Cecil? Mm, maybe three weeks ago. Uh huh. And just about three weeks ago, Appleton met Florence Fayette at a party. Look, Ambrose, I will agree with you that some people should not be met. 
But until there is a law against it, what can you do about it? I say there's a connection. He starts being real nice to Cecil at the same time he starts making a pitch for Florence Fayette. I know he is running around with the doll. Florence! Hmm, now, what's the angle? What's the angle? I think you were out in the sun too long. What angle can there be? Those books. And you've noticed how Cecil's acting lately? Yeah. Oh, now, wait a minute, Ambrose. If you are thinking that Fergus is going to put a chill on the Fayette doll... Oh, what good would that do him? He's not married to her. He wouldn't inherit her dough. Ah, there's got to be something else. Yeah. Her father? Hmm. Her father's not too happy about the whole thing. But what can he do? She's over 21. Then Fergus does not have to put the chill on him. Broadway, do me a favor. What? Talk to Cecil. Find out what you can. Me? But how? He knows Fergus hates me and I hate Fergus, but maybe he'll talk to you. Will you do it? I... Okay. Okay, I will try. Good. Meanwhile, I'll nose around and see what I can dig up. It is not easy for me to get to Cecil, but I finally managed to catch him in his dressing room one night when he finishes working at the nightclub where he has master of ceremonies. There, what happens is this. Look, Broadway, I... I'm in kind of a hurry. Sure, but I do not see you for quite some time, Cecil. That is, I do not see you to talk to. I've been busy. Uh-huh. Busy, uh, reading? What do you mean by that? Nothing, nothing. What are you so nervous about? I'm not. Oh, I guess it just looks like it, huh? Did you want to see me about something? Like they say, just to talk. I haven't got the time. Cecil, what has eaten you for the past couple of weeks? Nothing. What makes you think that? Well, it just looks like you're acting like a guy in love. What made you say that? What made you say that? You do not have to jump down my throat. I just say it. Why? Why did you say it? Hey, Cecil, take it easy. You're trying to needle me, huh? Give me the works, huh? I am not trying anything. All I say is... I know what you said. I... Look, I gotta go now. Who is the doll, Cecil? Shut up! You know, you are not a bad-looking guy. Maybe a doll would be glad if you are in love with her. Me? Me? Don't make me laugh. I am not trying. No, Cecil, you are not bad looking. Maybe this doll likes you, too. She loves him. I know she does. But maybe you have got a chance, too. Against him? Besides, he's my best friend, Fergus. Fergus Appleton, huh? Maybe the doll is Florence Fayette. Shut up. Now, now let me go. Sure, sure. My book. Where's my book? Is this one? <laughs> Never mind, I'll get it. Here it is, Cecil. Put it, put it down. I am just handing it to you. Give it to me. Sure. What is it? Give it to me. The perfect crime. I said give it to me. You do not have to fight for it here. Now, I'm getting out of here. With that, he bangs the door and leaves. Then I notice that a piece of paper drops out of the book. On it is a drawing. I figure that he will miss it and be back for it, so I copy it and take it back to Ambrose Hammer. He looks at it for a minute... And then says... You know, this looks like the floor plan of a house. Uh-huh. And there is a name under it. Menahan. Menahan. You know anybody by that name? Menahan? No. Wait a minute. I think there was a street in Brooklyn named Menahan. Brooklyn? Sure. And this is a drawing of the floor plan of a house. It falls out of that book on the perfect crime. Menahan Street, Brooklyn. Maybe we ought to take a trip over there, Broadway. Me? Go to Brooklyn? We've got a lot of loose ends to tie up. I do not wish to tie them up in Brooklyn. You want to help Cecil? Well, sure I do. Okay. Now, wait a second. How do you know which house this is on Menahan Street? I've got an idea. I've also got a few connections. Let's use them. So Ambrose drags me to where there are maps and plans. And he finds one that matches the drawing we have got. Then I do not see him for two days, until one night he puts me in a cab, takes me to Brooklyn, and we get out of the house on Menahan Street. There, the scene is as follows. I gave a couple of tickets for a show to a maid that works in this house. So? So she left the side door open so we can get in. We? Oui. <laughs> Ambrose, you are never so much alone as you are tonight. It's okay. No one lives in the house but an invalid woman. She's upstairs asleep by now. The maid won't bother us. Neither will I bother the maid. Good night. Come on, come on. This is for Cecil. I would like to start thinking of myself. It's okay, I tell you. Like shooting fish in a barrel. It is open. Sure, the maid said it'd be. Easy now. 
Ooh, it is dark. Shh, come on. Ambrose, somebody lights a light. Just my flashlight. <sighs> my, my. How well you are equipped for this work. Oh, let's see. Living room. Just like in the drawing. Piano over there. Ambrose, look. What? Shine your light at the piano again. Why? For once, do as I say, please. Okay. Fergus. It is Fergus Appleton. His picture. A photograph. Uh-huh. Come on. Take a look at it. Read what's on it. To my loving wife. Till death do us part. Fergus. My loving wife. I never knew the rat was married. The invalid woman, his wife. Till death do us part. Death. Oh, Ambrose, let us get out of here. Uh-huh. Oh, what a beautiful scheme. The filthy rat. Ambrose, those books. Cecil, the drawing. Uh-huh. I get it. Fergus gives Cecil the books to read. He wants to make Cecil commit a perfect crime. Yeah, talk him into being a super criminal, a play on his complex. Is that possible? With Cecil, sure. Cecil wants and needs attention. Killing somebody is a sure way to get it. The perfect crime. For Fergus, yeah. With his wife out of the way, he can marry the Fayette doll. I think I will go back and cook Mr. Appleton myself after I go to the gendarmes. No, no, not the police. Are you crazy? We have got to go to them. They'll only pick up poor Cecil. I don't want that to happen to you. No. But can you think of something? Let's get out of here first. Broadway. Wait a minute. What? Did you say Cecil's in love with the Fayette doll himself? I do. Oh, then I've got an idea. Oh, what an idea. No cops. Nothing but my idea. Count me out. No, no. You watch this house, and if Cecil comes near it, nab him. But I don't think he will. What makes you say that? Because I am going to do a little work on Cecil myself. It is very dull work watching the house in Brooklyn. But I do. And at no time does Cecil come near it. Five days go by, and I'm commencing to think that I will never see Mindy's again. Then I call Ambrose, and he tells me to come back home. I do so, and he makes me promise to be in the 1600 Club that night at a table he reserves for us. So, that night I show up there, and the scene is as follows. Ah, Broadway, have a seat. Ambrose, what is going on? Oh, nothing yet. Oh, I don't let Fergus Appleton see you. Fergus? Where? That table near the floor. That is the Fayette down with him? It is. <laughs> you know, I did a lot of work the past five days, and I found out something. I learned nothing at all in Brooklyn, but that does not surprise me. What do you learn here? That Cecil has a better chance for the doll than he thinks. Huh? And as for me, I'm going to bust up this guy Appleton's apple cart and get myself a raise from old man Fayette for doing it. You fix things for yourself, huh? Ah, never forget me. Old man Fayette might even make me editor. Then I'll can a lot of guys I hate. Look, what is going to happen here tonight? It is now 11, 14 and a half. In 30 seconds, Cecil Earl will come in. Then watch the fun. Ambrose, if you are thinking of making a joke of Cecil, I personally will tap your noggin. Wouldn't blame you a bit. But everything's going to be all right. I hope so. Because there is Cecil now. He's a little early. Now watch. Should I? He's going to Fergus' table. Now what? Watch. You stupid fool! What do you think you're doing? I love her. I love Let her. Let go of her. I am seeing things. Cecil is kissing the doll. Uh, huh? He he is taking her out of here. Stop that couple! Somebody stop them! Come on, Broadway. That's our cue to talk to Fergus. Waiter, waiter! Somebody stop that couple! Fergus, sit down. You, me, sit down, Fergus. Let, Let him go. go. Of me. If I do, will you promise to go to Manahan Street in Brooklyn? What? What did you say? You heard me. Now sit down. Ambrose. What? What did you say? Menahan Street. For the love of... Uh, not so loud. Looks like you've lost a girlfriend, Fergus. I... Uh, <laughs> Ambrose, why not Why not have a, have a sandwich? Why don't you lose yourself you... now, Fergus? Quick, the cops will be here any minute. And anyway, everybody's looking at you. And this is one time you don't enjoy it. Well, I... Um, all right. Uh, good, uh, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Ambrose, if you will stop landing for one minute, I would like to know what happens. Well, you saw it. But I do not understand it. It's very simple. Cecil's in love with her. In a second, I will bang you over the head with these ham and eggs without removing the plot. Okay, all I did was change Cecil from the perfect criminal to the perfect lover. You what? Sure. I loaded him up with uh, books about Don Juan. 
He liked them much better than the others. You know, I, I think he got more out of them. Well, that ends the festivities for that night. But it is still not the end of the story. The payoff comes a month later. And what it is, I will tell you in a minute. I am sitting in Mindy's when who walks in but Ambrose Hammer. He sits down and says... Hiya, Broadway. Well, Ambrose, I do not see you for quite some time. In fact, not since that night at the 1600 Club. I've been out of town. Oh, vacation? Nope, looking for a job. Job? But that night you told me you are likely to be made editor of Old Man Fayette's paper because you bust up the romance between his daughter and Fergus. I was fired. Fired? Why? I did too good a job on Cecil. I convinced him he was a Don Juan. And he was. Florence Fayette eloped with him. She... (laughs) Uh, Funny, huh? You're very funny. But but what about Cecil? Where is he? Hollywood. It seems this Don Juan complex stayed with him. In his first picture, he got to be a star. A great lover. You mean Cecil Earle is now in the movies? Yeah. And his first picture was the play Fergus Appleton starred in. Never, never. And so ends the famous Damon Runyon story, Broadway Complex. Listen in again next week for... The Damon Runyon Theater. The Damon Runyon Theater with John Brown as Broadway is directed by Richard Sandville and the stories adapted for radio by Russell Hughes. Vern Carstensen is in charge of production. This is a Mayfair production. (laughs) 